Welcome to another edition of Diplomatic Channel. I'm Amarachi Ubani. As we go into the year 2024, it is important to understand where Nigeria is headed foreign policy wise. And that brings to mind the question, does Nigeria have a clear foreign policy? And can we decipher what the foreign policy is under the administration of President Bola Tinubu? My guest this week, career ambassador and former ambassador to the Republic of Benin, Lawrence Obishakin, shares his thoughts with us. In my exclusive conversation with him, he discusses President Tinubu's shuttle diplomacy in the year 2023, the recent certification crisis with some African universities, and even the yet-to-be-signed and ratified EU-ACP agreement. That's all coming up in the program in just a few minutes. First, a quick check on other discussions in diplomatic circles. Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud has signed a law nullifying the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the government of Ethiopia and Somaliland, leasing a 20-kilometer stretch of land along its coastline to Ethiopia to establish a naval base. The deal was supposed to come into effect on January 1, 2024. Somaliland President Muse Bihi Abdi said the agreement included a statement that Ethiopia would soon recognize the territory as an independent country, which is where the bone of contention lies. Somaliland has always contested the legally binding character of the State of Union, which was to form a unified country after Somalia and Somaliland respectively gained independence from Italy and Britain. EU Council President Charles Michel says he will be stepping down from office early so he can stand as a member of the European Parliament. Mr Michel's tenure runs out in November, but the Parliament elections are set for June and the next European Council President must be elected by a majority of the EU's 27 leaders. If no successor is found in time, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban would temporarily hold the presidency. And finally, top U.S. and European diplomats have urged leaders in the Middle East to keep the Gaza war from spreading across the region. For three months into the conflict, more bloodshed underlined the challenge as Israel presses ahead with its offensive. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and European Union's top diplomat Josep Borrell were on separate trips to the region to try to quell spillover from the war into Lebanon, the West Bank and Red Sea shipping routes, where Yemen's Iran-allied Houthis have said they will keep up attacks until Israel halts its campaign in the Palestinian enclave. Jordan's King Abdullah has urged Blinken to use Washington's influence over Israel to press it for an immediate ceasefire, warning him of the catastrophic repercussions of Israel's continued military campaign. Joining me now is Korea Ambassador and former Nigerian Ambassador to Benin Republic, Ambassador Lawrence Obishakin. He joins me from Abuja, Ambassador Happy New Year, and thanks for joining us on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you, Amarachi. I also wish to uh, say Happy New Year to you and all the viewers and all the workers in Channel TV, including uh, the, the owner of Channel TV, a great admirable uh, communicator and entrepreneur. Thank you so much. He'll Thank hear. you so much. He'll Happy hear. New Year. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I, I wanted us to go into, you know, our projections for 2024. And let's just begin by asking, if you think that Nigeria left some unfinished business regarding agreements, uh, regarding deals and treaties in the international community in 2023? Well, uh, the nations are there until... The owner of the world egg puts an end to it. So it, it's a continuity. Uh, I believe Nigeria is still a vibrant nation, as the president has said. But in terms of treaties, well, 
treaties are not only signed by diplomats and those that have the capacity to do so, but then the National Assembly, the legislature of the country, must ratify them. Nigeria has signed so many treaties. We are always eager to, from my experience, you know, in the service. Nigeria is always one of the first, like MPT, non proliferation treaty, uh, the nuclear non proliferation treaty. Nigeria will be among the first to sign it. Even almost before we realize what may be the consequences, even negative, to our economy, we sign. But then, how? when do we ratify? It takes so long to ratify, to ratify it. But I think, uh, in terms of treaties, Nigeria, me, I would advise that we should pay more attention to our domestic emancipation, industrial development. Because nobody listens, even at international level, to poor people. Look, when China became strong, so everybody started listening to China. It is your power that gives you uh, the, the audience at the international communities. Well, the ECOWAS, which is the closer to us, we have been doing our best, almost to our detriment at times, but we need to pay attention to our domestic you know, power to use it to as a leverage of our international relations, our foreign policy objectives, as we have you know, stipulated in our constitution. This is the much I can say. I'm not in the service now. Those who are looking at the document, they will know where we are lacking. But we are paying attention at what we see, the ACP, the EU and the EPC, the, the, the ECOWAS Treaty, the African Union, yes, that's immediately, that's our immediate uh, attention here. This is what I can say, you know, Amarachi. Yeah, and maybe, you know, it is um, the reality on the ground with its domestic policy that probably, you know, spurred the president on to his shuttle diplomacy, a lot of which we saw uh, soon after he assumed office in on May 29th. Would you consider them helpful for Nigeria's growth? I mean, he, he made a number of trips, uh, South, uh, United Arab Emirates about twice, Saudi Arabia about once. Um, he went to India. He also went to the UN, uh, New York, and, you know, and then finished off in, in, in Germany. And, uh, you know, do you think that these deals are helpful for Nigeria's growth when you compare them to the realities uh, on the ground that we present realities that we're seeing, the economic hardship and everything else that Nigerians are going through right now. Thank you. You see, the president, like a, a big grass cutter, he does not jump out in the wild in the hot afternoon for nothing. If it's not being pursued, then it suddenly pursues something. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a very busy person. I happen to have worked with one of them for about four years. If he has so much to do at home, a big nation. Nigeria is made up of many nations, nation states. And so there are so many like, securities there for him to pursue at home. The economy itself. Look at the oil subsidy removal, what it has cost. It's almost like removing the teeth of an elderly my person. You know, so if he goes out, it's because there's some there is need for it. I believe the president Bola Ahmed who is a very experienced politician, and he knows that was watch your back every time. But I think going out wasn't to me, wasn't too many. If 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 we have an objective, you know, to meet like Echo Summit, some are statutory, they are mandatory. Is uh, is the chairman of the of the ECOWAS authorities of states and he must be there. And we are even lucky that the headquarters is here. So each time ECOWAS does he must be there if he's the chairman and he has to go on behalf of ECOWAS too on behalf of his country. So if he goes to, to speak for us, because the president is our figure, is a father figure, is also the symbol of the, the whole nation of Nigeria. So I believe that uh, going out by the president, of course, is not just for nothing. Look, at our system is after the United States of America, the presidential system. When President Biden goes out, you know that uh, <laughs> there's something there for them. So I believe those who are who are in charge of his itinerary, they must have known and realized that 
Uh, because for president to go go out is expensive, you know. People mm. some some you know, have to go for Reiki, the advance, you know, team has to go. And then they will know, they will have realize that uh, you know this is profitable for Nigeria. Uh, you know, people also look at it that way. And uh, the president cannot just go out for nothing, you know. Not only is it expensive, uh, it's also his time. The president doesn't have time. Yes, but if you look at if you look at the realities on the ground, I mean, um, and the message that he seems to have been, you know, uh, 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 perpetrating, you know, outside, it is that Nigeria is ready for business. So, so he says, um, the bottlenecks are removed. Uh, we're ready for investments. But but on the ground, you have uh, local current uh, local uh, manufacturing industries, local industries, beg your pardon, mm. um, that are struggling. Mm. You have a system that is already struggling. You don't have regular power supply. Um, foreign currency mm -hmm. is hard to come by. There's also a difficulty in repatriating these funds. Uh, and then you also have uh, the issue of petrol. We're an oil producing uh, country, but yet mm -hmm. you know we're paying so mm -hmm. much you know for subsidy which he removed, and then now you know the price of everything has gone up, even though the price of every Everything has also gone up everywhere else. But when you compare what's yeah. going on on the ground and then with the president going from nation to nation and saying Nigeria is open for business, Nigeria is, I mean, and then he's asking for, you know, these funds, you know, to come into the well, country. Is it realistic, <laughs> though? He is our number one public relations officer. And luckily, you and I were in this business together. Uh, you know, if you don't say that your market is good, who will uh, price? Nobody. But the truth is that uh, there are some advantages in what we do. Nigerian Naira has been seriously devalued, but it means that Nigerian products will be cheaper. We found out even going to open a republic, you know, just close here, that I visited a few weeks ago, so that more of, they are buying more of Nigerian products now. The only problem we have is that we are not producing much and that we are not, you know, the, 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 the ingredients, the element, the, 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 the inputs, of our industries, they are too foreign, you know, import dependent. If we we're producing most of the things we're using here, like if we are producing cars, everybody want to buy Nigerian cars. Because look at it, you know, Amarachi. In the past, with one thousand dollars in your naira in your pocket, one thousand naira, you will take three thousand French CFA. But now with one thousand naira in your pocket, they will give you nine hundred eighty nine. But look at it the other way around, the positive way. What many people used to buy for 3,000 safer in Nigeria, they will now buy for 980. So it means they will buy four or five times. But the problem is that it cannot be 980 because most of the input of our industries are also imported. So we import other, other people's inflation too. What I think the president should be doing is to make sure that our industries are more productive and that we have more indigenous, you know, products. Just like one president, Getulio Vargas, said uh, of Brazil around 1957, that look, he swore by his God that he would make sure that the five pillars of emancipation of a nation will happen to Brazil. In Brazil, number one, that Brazil must have electricity that is functioning. Two, it must have petroleum industry. It's one of the best today, Petrobras. And that Brazil must have a good functioning railway system. Let's look at those three alone. Leave the other two. The railway system, it, 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 is, it is inconceivable that you cannot travel on rail from Abuja to Lagos, the biggest you know, commercial center of Nigeria. And people are thinking of building railway lines in another country. You know, the, it, it's the, the, the five, the, 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 the regional center, you should be able to go on rail from here to Enugu, from Enugu, to Portacot, from Portacot to Maiduguri, Maiduguri to, to Kaduna, Kaduna, Kano, Kano to Sokoto, and down south through Calabar, through Ibadan. You know, it's there that we are serious, and that is what is making things very expensive. Transportation, what Getulo Vargas, the president of, of, of Brazil, that finally committed suicide for not being able to fulfill this. Although that's under, you know, investigation how it happened. You know, yeah, that they will we, produce we, we, vehicle we, we, also. Yeah, you remember, we, we used we to buy vehicles in Nigeria for 4,000 naira. So what happens? So the value of Nigeria, either Nigeria must earn enough to enable them to buy whatever the inflation, hyperinflation, we're almost hyperinflation, we're into now. You know, get to where your car now, you have to spend about 50, 60,000 naira 
when you are not any more than 120,000 as a pensioner. At most 150. So how would they survive? Well, we'll continue exploring foreign policy because, um, you know, we also need to explore the rumors uh, that emanated this week that ECOWAS mm -hmm. is in negotiations with the Sierra Leonean government about the former president, Enes Koroma, serving his exile here in Nigeria. Nothing like, it's not like this is the first time this has happened. I mean, uh, former Liberian President Charles Taylor also served his time here in Nigeria. So Siad what do you Barre, think of who died here. Siad Barre of Somalia, um, the last yeah. president, legitimate president of Somalia, died here. Uh, you know, so many uh, in, uh, from, 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 from neighboring countries, they, they come here from Chad. You know, it, 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 that's a good thing. You know, people say that no matter how poor in relationship you are, uh, there will still be somebody who admires you. You know, we are still, Nigeria is still a, a hegemon. Nigeria is still a, a superpower, a regional power. You cannot take that away from us. Nigerians are intelligent, enter enterprising, and we are rich. People are there, look at many foreigners all over. In fact, almost, a, a, you know, a big challenge. The people are there mining our gold, doing whatever they are, both Chinese and non-Chinese, everybody's there. So we just pray that government will be able to harmonize this and get the best out for the majority of the people, not that the, 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 the sons of the house will be suffering and then, then foreigners will be feeding fat. I'm not uh, xenophobic, but I think Nigeria has to control the way things are and the way things are going. By the way, of uh, Syria alone, you know, we're very close to Syria alone. It used to be our capital too, you know this. You know, uh, we had a lot of link, not only religious link, even people say some people speak your wife Saru, Saru, uh, the Saru people. So don't uh, don't don't underestimate that. If he decides to come here, well, for safety, we are still our brother's keeper. If that will give peace to them, because uh, the circumstances in which it become is becoming uh, an exile now, it, it's something that uh, when you look at the report, you won't be very happy about it. That is happening is still happening in Africa. So I think. I, I think well, it, it, to me, I see it as a positive thing to 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 play host at least a temporary, so you say, for temporary time. Yeah. Um, but I think until, uh, until the political crisis dies down a bit, I understand that. Down, yeah. But I'd also like you to speak about the EU ACP agreements uh, and. and and in the it's supposed to be a continuation of the Cotonou Agreement, from my understanding. It's been a controversial document so that, as of November, Nigeria said it was still studying, uh, despite a January 1st deadline, a January 1st, 2024 deadline. At the point of controversy is where the deal appears to trample on the sovereignty of ACP countries to agree a set of rules regarding family life and values. Is this a deal Nigeria should pull out of? Or, or one that, you know, it, it says it's con still considering and it should consider to, to consider. The, the ACP, the EU ACP agreement is an economic partnership agreement, which was, uh, we started with the Lume agreement of 1975. It's almost 50 years now, mm. 48 years now, if I'm mathematically correct. You know, the, why, why did we sign it? It was a formal relationship agreement, a convention. It has been revised several times now. It is to help the signatories, usually African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries to have access to uh, markets of the EU. But, you know, let's look at the larger picture. How long shall we continue to depend on Father Christmas? We must be able to fly on our own wings now Nigeria became independent political in 1960. But have we become economically independent? We're still begging from someone to give you access. Do you need to beg for access when your product is good? Good wine is no douche. China doesn't beg anybody again now. And there was a time when Japanese product, my uncle told me, well, oh, he said this chap, it can't be a good product. But people are running after Japanese car. Oh, it's China, it's Taiwan. Look at people are running after them now. So when will people begin to run after Nigerian product? I said, yes, hello. Don't we have a car we call Nigerica? And people say, oh, the Nigerica is the best car. It's the fastest, it's sturdy. We have our own. God has endowed us with the raw materials. We have almost almost 
of what you use in manufacturing cars. Thank God for the Dangotes who gave us cement, the Abagin cement, our refine, refineries. So such people should be encouraged, more Nigerians should be encouraged so that we, 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 we can fly on our wings. We can showcase what we can do. Nigerians have the way with that. We have the brain. But what we need is infrastructure. No, no, the instability, the insecurity is the greatest headache, you know, that Nigeria will have. We look at Niger. Uh, Nigeria <laughs> has been in crosshairs with her neighbor. It seems like the tension no. has subsided for now. Should Nigeria continue her hardline approach as led by ECOWAS? No. You, you know that uh, as a Yoruba say, I will translate to you. That when the drum is saying, kill me dead, I want to break my neck, then you dance very slowly so that you can go home and prepare for another dance for another day. Niger, Niger people are our people. And more importantly, our neighbors are not supporting this. Yeah. Reportedly, some of the neighbors of Niger, we are not the only one. And we have to be careful, you know, Niger is a landlocked country. And this is United, as a United Nations convention that makes it mandatory to give them access. We must not, for maybe some of us have not been looking at this. They must have access to the sea. It is an obligation. It's an international obligation that we sign. We've been a student. We must do it. And then these are people, they speak our language. The houses are there. The polars are there. The, the Tuaregs, they, they are there. These are our people. They are here uh, all over the place. We have to be careful. I believe that uh, even our president is now seeing it clearly. You know, the international relations is not practiced at, at state level. He's just a first time president. He is an astute politician, but he needs to learn the, the, the arts, the skills of these diplomatic uh, relationships with your neighbor. You can change your partners, but you cannot change your neighbors. And these are things that have joined us uh, over the years. And we have invested in Niger. I understand we're the one that built the rail there. So, which has never happened anyway. So it's like a, a link with Benin Republic. There are people you cannot slide your face, you say you spite your face to, like, I don't know how they say it in English. You cut, you cut again. your nose, you know, spite your face. That's the same. Yes, because yeah. if, we're, if we decide to say this child is bad, our people said, no matter how bad your child, you never hand over that child to the tiger to consume. <laughs> you know, and they will come. We have been in the military something before. You know, international, multilateral level is not the best way to treat your neighbors. That's it. My professor told me, that if you want to deal with a nation, take him to the multilateral arena and say, oh, my hands are tight. You know, these are neighbors. We have to be careful. More important, others are taking advantage of it. Nigeria needs all that will bring it money now. That's just the reality. When you are poor, you must be very careful. Even the Bible says so. Nobody, nobody listens to a poor person. If you say you want to do this, and uh, another country is you want to you want to place embargo on one thing, and another country is giving giving that thing, you will find yourself stranded, and it's not good. An old man's head is not good for a knock. Nigeria is an elder in West Africa. We are the biggest country in West Africa in terms of population, in terms of resources too. And uh, we have to be careful about it. We do it, we do it softly. It is, we, have to, we have to take it softly this time. Well, Niger is a neighbor. You know that Niger and Nigerians in French in 1975 used to be pronounced the same way and written the same way? Because they felt where the it was President Senda Senghor who said that should be A for Nigeria and E for Nigerian. We are that close. Mm -hmm. So I believe they are hearing me, the authorities, we have to be careful because they say that, uh, the African proverb says that uh, when you hit the child with the left hand, you draw him back with the right hand. You know, uh, Ambassador we Lawrence. must play it and make sure they come back. So that's it. Our interest is, is in the, is in the, prosperity of our people, prosperity of the Chile people, because no matter how rich we are, if mm -hmm. your neighbors are poor, you are all poor. In Yoruba, they said, when you have one rich man with six poor persons, there are, there are seven poor fellows. Yeah. Ambassador Lawrence of Bishaking, a real pleasure it's been. Thank you for kicking off our 2024 you, <laughs> with us here on Diplomatic Channel. It's and my, uh, we appreciate my pleasure too. Happy New Year to you all.
and all the best for Nigeria. Thanks for staying with us until the end. I'd like for you to share your thoughts on this edition. You can send them to at Amarachi underscore Ubani on X, Amarachi Ubani on Instagram, and Ubani Amarachi on Facebook. I'll see you next time.